In 2019, inside a locked laboratory at the University of Tokyo, geneticist Dr. Hiroshi Tanaka made a discovery that would end his career and change Japanese history forever. He was analysing DNA from a 3,800-year-old skeleton found in a sacred Ainu burial ground in northern Hokkaido, remains that the Japanese government had tried to keep from being tested for over 40 years. What he found in that genetic code would force Japan to confront its darkest secret. The people they called primitive barbarians were actually the original Japanese, and everyone else, including the emperor himself, were the invaders. This is the story of how one scientist's courage to sequence forbidden DNA exposed a 150-year cover-up, and revealed that everything Japanese learn about their origins is a carefully constructed lie. But to understand why this discovery sent shockwaves through the Japanese government, we need to start with a mystery that haunted anthropologists for over a century. In 1865, northern Hokkaido, British explorer Thomas Wright Blekiston stood frozen in disbelief, staring at a group of indigenous Japanese who looked nothing like the Japanese he met in Tokyo. These people have thick, wavy beards, deep-set eyes, and hair covering their arms, features that would be impossible for typical East Asians. They looked more like my own countrymen than any Asian I'd encountered, he would later write in his journal, a document the Japanese government would attempt to confiscate decades later. Blakiston had just encountered the Ainu, and his detailed photographs and measurements would become the first scientific evidence of Japan's hidden people. But here's what makes this encounter so explosive. The Ainu claimed to be the original inhabitants of all Japan, not just the northern islands. They spoke of a time when their ancestors lived as far south as Tokyo, before being pushed north by invaders from across the sea. For over a century, the Japanese government dismissed these claims as primitive mythology. Official textbooks stated that the Japanese people were a unique, homogeneous race that had inhabited the islands since time immemorial. The Ainu were portrayed as a small group of backward hunters who arrived recently from Siberia. But the Ainu elders kept telling a different story, one passed down through countless generations in their oral histories. They spoke of the Wajin, the boat people, who came from the sunset lands bringing metal and rice, and who slowly pushed the original people into the cold north. These stories were consistent across different Ainu communities, separated by hundreds of miles. They contained specific details about ancient place names, migration routes, and burial customs that archaeologists would later confirm. But in 1865, no one was ready to believe that these hairy barbarians could be telling the truth about Japanese origins. Fast forward to March 15, 1991. In a cramped laboratory at Sapporo Medical University, molecular biologist Dr. Masako Yamada is about to make the first crack in Japan's origin myth. She's been secretly collecting DNA samples from Ainu volunteers, work that required years of building trust with communities that had every reason to distrust Japanese scientists. Many Ainu elders initially refused, remembering how Japanese researchers had stolen their ancestors' bones for studies in the early 1900s. What Yamada found in those first DNA samples was revolutionary. The Ainu carried genetic markers, specifically mitochondrial DNA haplogroup Y1, that were completely absent in 99% of other Japanese populations. This wasn't just a minor variation, it was genetic proof that the Ainu were a completely distinct population. In 1998, construction workers building a new highway through Nagano Prefecture made a discovery that would change everything. Their bulldozer uncovered a mass burial site containing over 500 skeletons, all dating to the Jomon period, Japan's prehistory stretching from 16,000 to 300 BC, among these remains was one skeleton so perfectly preserved that researchers could extract intact DNA, something previously thought impossible for remains this old in Japan's humid climate. The skeleton belonged to a woman who died 9,000 years ago, her bones preserved by a unique combination of volcanic ash and clay soil. Dr. Kenichi Shinoda from the National Museum of Nature and Science was given the task of analysing her DNA. What he expected to find was genetic evidence linking the ancient Jomon people to modern mainland Japanese. What he actually found sent shockwaves through the academic community. The Jomon woman's DNA was virtually identical to modern Ainu samples. Not similar, virtually identical. After 9,000 years, the genetic line had remained almost completely pure. This meant the Ainu weren't recent arrivals from Siberia, as the government claimed. They were the direct, unmixed descendants of Japan's original inhabitants. But the revelation got even more explosive when Shinoda compared the Jomon DNA to modern Japanese populations. 
The average Japanese person from Tokyo carried only 12% Jomon ancestry. People from Kyoto, the ancient capital, had even less, about 9%. The emperor's family, when discrete samples were obtained from public medical records, showed only 7% Jomon ancestry. Think about what this means. The people running Japan, making its laws, and defining its culture were 90% descended from ancient invaders. The Ainu, whom they called primitive, were the only true indigenous Japanese left. Let's discuss the Yayoi invasion everyone seems to avoid. Here's the history lesson Japanese schools will never teach. Around 300 BC, Japan experienced what can only be described as a slow-motion invasion. The Yayoi people, arriving from the Korean peninsula in waves over several centuries, didn't come as conquerors with armies. They came as farmers with a technology that would prove more powerful than any weapon. Wet rice cultivation. Rice farming can support 10 times more people per square mile than hunting and gathering. Within just 600 years, the Yayoi population exploded from a few thousand immigrants to millions. The math is brutal but simple. The Jomon hunter-gatherers were genetically swamped. But not everywhere. In Hokkaido, the cold climate made rice farming impossible with ancient techniques. The Tsugaru Strait acted like a genetic firewall, preserving the Jomon lineage in the north, while the rest of Japan was transformed. The genetic evidence for this invasion is overwhelming. When researchers analyzed Y chromosome markers, passed from father to son, they found that haplogroup O, dominant in Korea and China, makes up 51% of modern Japanese male lineages. This marker is completely absent in pure Ainu populations. Even more telling is the distribution pattern. In Western Japan, closest to Korea, haplogroup O reaches 60%. As you move north and east, it decreases. In northern Tohoku, it's 40%. In Hokkaido, among people with known Ainu ancestry, it drops to less than 10%. But the Ainu story goes back much further than the Jomon period. When geneticists looked at the deep ancestry of Ainu-specific markers, they found something extraordinary. Haplogroup D, carried by 87% of Ainu men, is one of the oldest lineages. It split from other Asian populations approximately 40,000 years ago. The only other places where haplogroup D is found in high frequencies are Tibet, and the Andaman Islands, both isolated populations that avoided later waves of migration. This means the ancestors of the Ainu were part of the first successful wave of humans to populate Asia. While their cousins went on to populate the Americas and Australia, one group settled in Japan and stayed there for 40,000 years. Dr. Takashi Gakuhari from Kanazawa University, who led the groundbreaking 2019 study, put it this way, The Ainu are a genetic time capsule. Their DNA preserves the story of humanity's first exploration of Asia, frozen in time by Japan's island isolation. But Gakuhari's research almost didn't happen. When he first proposed sequencing ancient Jomon remains from sacred Ainu sites, he faced massive bureaucratic resistance. The Japanese government's treatment of the Ainu represents one of the longest-running ethnic suppressions in modern history. It began in 1869 with the Hokkaido Former Aborigines Protection Act a law whose very name declared the Ainu as extinct. The government seized 90% of Ainu lands, banned their language in schools, outlawed their religious practices, and forced them to adopt Japanese names. Children were taken from their families and sent to boarding schools where speaking Ainu resulted in beatings. Traditional tattoos that Ainu women wore as symbols of beauty and maturity were banned, with violators facing imprisonment. The bear ceremony central to Ainu spirituality was outlawed as barbaric, by 1950, the government declared the assimilation complete. Official documents stated, the Ainu people no longer exist as a distinct ethnic group. But we now know genetics tells a different story. Even after 150 years of forced assimilation and intermarriage, distinct Ainu genetic markers persist. A 2012 study found that 36,000 people in Hokkaido carry enough Ainu ancestry to be considered genetically Ainu, despite only 25,000 people officially identifying as such. This means tens of thousands of people don't even know their Ainu. Their families hid their identity so thoroughly that the knowledge was lost. In 2018, investigative journalist Yuki Tanaka exposed something that shocked even those familiar with Japan's treatment of the Ainu. Over 1,600 Ainu skeletons were being held in Japanese universities, taken from sacred burial grounds without permission between 1860 and 1970. These weren't archaeological specimens. 
They were the grandparents and great-grandparents of living Ainu people, stolen for biased anthropological studies. Hokkaido University alone held 1,015 skeletons in a locked basement room that Ainu representatives were forbidden to enter. When families requested the return of their ancestors for proper burial, they were told the bones were too scientifically valuable to release. These bones contain genetic evidence that could definitively prove Ainu claims to indigenous status, something that would have massive legal implications for land rights and reparations. The Japanese government was literally sitting on the evidence that could destroy their national mythology. Which brings us back to that locked laboratory in 2019. Dr. Hiroshi Tanaka had spent three years fighting for permission to analyze just one skeleton from the Hokkaido University collection. The remains belonged to an Ainu man who died in 1873, just four years after the beginning of forced assimilation. His DNA would be pure, unaffected by the forced intermarriage that followed. Tanaka used cutting-edge techniques to extract DNA from the petrous bone, the densest part of the skull that best preserves genetic material. He had to work in secret, knowing that government officials were monitoring his research. What Tanaka found exceeded even his expectations. The Ainu man's genome contained genetic variants never seen before in any population. These weren't just neutral markers, they were functional genes that affected physical appearance, disease resistance, and metabolism. One variant, in the ABCC11 gene, explained why Ainu have different earwax and body odor than other Japanese, a seemingly minor trait that had been used to discriminate against them for centuries. But the most shocking discovery was in the immune system genes. The Ainu carried unique variants that provided resistance to certain diseases but increased susceptibility to others. These variants were perfectly adapted to the hunting-gathering lifestyle but became disadvantageous, with agricultural foods and crowded living conditions. This explains something tragic, why Ainu populations crash so dramatically after forced settlement. It wasn't just cultural assimilation, their genes were literally incompatible with the lifestyle forced upon them. Today something remarkable is happening in Hokkaido. Young people who grew up thinking they were fully Japanese are taking DNA tests and discovering Ainu ancestry. Social media groups for hidden Ainu have thousands of members sharing their genetic results and rediscovering their heritage. Museums that once displayed Ainu artifacts as relics of an extinct people are now working with living Ainu communities to reframe their exhibitions. The Upapoi National Ainu Museum, opened in 2020, attracted over a million visitors in its first year itself. But the revival faces massive challenges. Only 10 native Ainu speakers remain alive, all over 80 years old. Traditional knowledge about medicinal plants, navigation techniques, and spiritual practices is disappearing even faster. One of the most fascinating aspects of modern genetic research is the discovery of a hidden Jomon gradient across all of Japan. The Ryukyuan people of Okinawa tell a similar story. They average 27% Jomon ancestry, making them genetic cousins to the Ainu despite being separated by the entire length of Japan. Both populations preserved ancient genes by living on the periphery, beyond the reach of the Yayoi agricultural expansion. This genetic map reveals the true history of Japan, a central core of Yayoi descended agricultural people, surrounded by indigenous populations pushed to the margins. Intriguingly, as mentioned earlier, the Ainu share a noticeable connection with Siberian peoples, particularly those of the northeast like the Chukchi and Itelman. These Siberian groups in turn are known to share ancestry with the first Native Americans, who crossed into the Americas thousands of years ago. The overlap in genetic markers between the Ainu and these northern populations hints at a common origin, a prehistoric wave of hunter-gatherers who spread across northern Asia before crossing the Bering Land Bridge. This ancient kinship is so deep that scientists believe the ancestors of the Ainu and Native Americans may have diverged before the last glacial maximum, long before the peopling of the New World. At the same time, the Ainu's ocean-facing world connects them to the south, towards the coral paths of the Pacific. Genetic studies have shown faint but fascinating affinities between the Ainu and Austronesian-speaking populations, including Polynesians. Some of this connection may stem from shared ancient East Asian roots, as both groups trace parts of their ancestry to migratory peoples who ventured along the coasts of East and Southeast Asia millennia ago. The possibility of parallel or indirect genetic links across the Pacific evokes an image of a prehistoric ring of exchange, where islanders, seafarers and coastal hunters shaped the human story from Japan to Oceania. 
Together, these links weave a remarkable tale. A people whose genetic signature bridges the frozen coasts of Siberia, the misty forests of northern Japan, and the warm oceanic roots of Polynesia. The Ainu genome is a kind of living museum of human prehistory, preserving signals from some of the earliest migrations out of East Asia, the same ancestral rivers that flowed into the Americas and rippled across the Pacific. The story of the Ainu people is nothing short of remarkable, a living testament to humanity's resilience and diversity. The Ainu have carried forward one of the world's oldest cultural lineages, maintaining a spiritual harmony with nature that feels almost poetic in today's modern world. Their deep reverence for the spirits of animals, rivers and forests, embodied in ancient rituals like the bear ceremony, shows how profoundly they understood the balance between humans and the natural world. The Ainu remind us that to be human is not merely to exist, but to coexist with the land, with others, and with the unseen forces that shape our world. If you found this journey into the ancient and captivating world of the Ainu people fascinating, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. There's a whole universe of forgotten histories and unseen connections waiting to be discovered, and every subscription helps bring more of these incredible stories to life. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.